Hello everybody. Hi, you're not gonna see my face much in this video because I'm going to show you really uh, preparation. I'm using this William Davis's Super Gut recipe for, I can't do this without looking at you, um, his recipe for yogurt. And what makes it very unique, a couple of different things, he teaches you in the book exactly which strain of probiotic to use to accomplish which purpose, whether it's for sleep or mood or um, pain or um, SIBO or a variety of different situations because based on the latest research. You know, five years ago we didn't know these things, but now we do. The next thing that's unique about the yogurt is the culture time. It's 36 hours. That's a lot of time. and the culturing, the bacteria growth is exponential. So it's kind of like compounded interest. You start out really slow and then wow, you get just to shoot straight up the cliff. So the last hour you get exponentially more microbe growth than you did um, or culture growth than you did in the first hour. And the other thing that's unique is that we're not just using, now I'm using dairy, you can use other things, coconut milk or a variety of things, but you're not just using dairy and the probiotic or the starter, you're also feeding, using different things to feed the culture. So what my purpose here is to show you because one of my associates said, Tammy, you need to show us how to do that. You take it for granted. So I'm going to show you how I do this. Specifically, I am making the super gut um, SIBO yogurt. You, there are very many different varieties of yogurt, but I'm just specifically doing this one. So, I'm starting with, the recipe is one capsule of Digestive Advantage Probiotic, and I'm putting that in my pitcher. Yes, I know it's a plastic pitcher. I use it almost never. Then, I have, and I do have a chart. If you are watching this video because you're in our Forever Young Academy, I will attach the chart so that you can see where to buy all of these products. Then I have one capsule of Biofin. That's exciting because it helps us to um, control weight. You can make the yogurt with just one of these probiotics. You don't have to use all of them. Whoops all together. Yes, I know, I should have put my hair in a ponytail. I'm sorry, but I'm not serving this to the public. So, you know, we have to we do what we can. And then, 10 tablets. Huh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 capsules of this one, but you have to crush these. So I'm using a Ziploc silicone bag and my meat tenderizer is flat on the bottom. You could use a cast iron pan, you could use a hammer. The more finely you chop it, the more consistent your results will be. Because if you leave chunks, one jar of yogurt may be thicker than the other. And I really would rather use a Ziploc bag because then I would get all the powder out more effectively, but I don't want to use that plastic. Then we're putting two tablespoons and this measurement is a teaspoon so I have to do two don't talk while I'm counting three four five six about six and a half teaspoons it's about two tablespoons and that is inulin this feeds the bacteria while it's growing yes it's also getting fed by the sugar in the dairy but this will give us much, uh, very much higher bacteria count. So those are our ingredients there. Now, I should have already gotten this out of the refrigerator. When I did this the first time, I tried to use my raw milk and cream. The recipe calls for half and half. Well, 
isn't half and half half milk half cream so I couldn't shouldn't I be able to use half milk and half cream I tried that when you use raw milk the naturally occurring healthy bacteria in the milk compete with the bacteria that we just added so you're not going to get as good a result and it's separated I got whey on the bottom whey is the water that comes off of cheese making and this is a kind of cheese so I got whey water on the bottom and really thick hard fat on top so I get better results when I'm using half and half. So you put a little bit in and whisk it up. This is really, really important. And I've learned several different things that I'm gonna do to try to keep each jar consistent. Because if you get too much of the inulin and the bacteria, the probiotics in one jar versus another, you're not going to get consistent results. So notice here that I am not a professional chef or I would have had all of this part done in advance. Notice that I'm using a whisk that's flat on the bottom. And I mixed up all the powders with just a little bit of the half and half first, and then I added the rest of it. I feel like the raw potato starch mixes up a little bit better than the inulin. I did get organic raw potato starch. So then, because the first several batches that I made, did not turn out quite as well. What I do sometimes is I fill each jar just maybe halfway. And then I go back and fill them up the rest of the way. So that if I have more of the powders in the bottom, It gives me a second chance to distribute it more evenly. And if you have a better way to do that, especially if you practice and it, you find something that works better for you, I would love to hear your experience and get your input to make this whole process a little easier. The next thing I'm going to do is get a sous vide instead of this yogurt maker. The yogurt maker was 40 when I bought it, and now, oh, whoops. Yeah, that's the problem. Let me see if I can show you. So, oh no, that's probably the inulin, yeah, because it's like, <laughs> it's like gum. That's a pain. Well, I'm gonna come back when I finish the video, I'm just going to put a little bit, a little clump of that in each of the jars. And, you know, I'm betting that ancient man did not have all these tools and measurements when he used to make yogurt. So then the next thing I do is I do fill my yogurt machine with water. I would rinse this out and put hot water in it and put Put it in the yogurt machine so then let me see if you can see that yes so i'm turning on my my product is mv power you need to be sure that it'll go up to 36 hours and that it will do get as low as 100 degrees you need to be able to control the temperature and the time and this one will so i'm setting it for 106 degrees and 36 hours so I generally make mine in the evening and then a day and a half later when I get up in the morning it's done so then I'm gonna push start it tells you to cover it with plastic wrap of course I'm not going to do that I did try covering it with parchment paper and I don't do that anymore I, I just put the lid on because I didn't feel like I was accomplishing anything with the paper because it's still collected moisture on the inside, just like the lid does. So I quit doing that. Okay, so I hope that is helpful for you. 
and um, write a message below. Send me a message if you have questions, if there's anything I can help with, or if you have tips about how to make this easier. I would love that. I think the sous vide may do that for me because then I'm going to put my yogurt in a large jar and just put the sous vide stick in there and I won't have this big appliance to keep out on my counter. If you're doing, your, you, you want to eat one or two cups a day or one or two half servings, half cup servings, and if there's two or three people in your house eating that, you're gonna find yourself making yogurt pretty consistently. So, I hope this helps.